The following is a production of Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. this blue water diving because it's, uh, it's in a place where there's no bottom visible. Uh, most diving, you're diving on or just above a bottom, and out there it's just all blue in all directions. Diving for the first time in, in blue water in the open ocean was a spectacular experience. In fact, every time I did it, it was a spectacular experience. We call it blue water, but it's very blue. You know, it's, it's a beautiful color, blue, and the deeper you go, the bluer it gets. Um, you know, you could get down there and look back up at the surface and, and watch the bubbles make their way to the surface and reflect light in all directions. When I first came here, we had been for just a few years doing this blue water diving going out in the middle of the ocean and using diving as a means to observe and collect fragile planktonic animals. We tend to think of these things as not having much behavior uh, and if they're just swimming around in a little tank on the desk they might not but if you are able to see them in the larger natural context then you you can. It was like Jane Goodall going and watching what the chimps were doing in their in the jungle rather than at the zoo and uh, so for us it was going in and seeing what the jellyfish and the, and the worms and the snails and the salps were doing in their natural environment. Um, and of course people had used scuba to do that in places like coral reefs and near shore shallow water environments. And all we needed was a way that would let us do that out in the open water. In order to make this a safe procedure, We've always used the system that we call tether diving, so that each diver has a 10 meter long rope, basically, that connects him or her to a central point. And that point is, is fastened to a, a line that hangs down from the surface from a float and is in turn connected by a line to the boat. So you are actually physically connected through those lines all the way back up to the boat at the surface. We would normally have three divers at a time out on these lines with a fourth diver in the middle just kind of watching over them all. So that fourth diver isn't really doing any active collecting work but his or her job is to keep an eye on the other ones. And that means that you can dive around, you can look around, you can go anywhere within 30 foot radius of this without worrying about drifting away, getting too deep and so forth does limit your ability to go after things. And so, um, you know, if you see something that you really, really like and want to go get, you have to swim hard enough that you pull all the rest of this stuff behind you. Looking for transparent animals takes a little bit of adjustment because um, if you just look around like you normally would, you'd just see the blue water, or you'd see the bubbles, or you'd see the surface, or you'd see the other divers. Um, I had to learn to uh, adjust my focus a little bit um, and focus on the water within, you know, two to ten feet in front of me um, so that I could see things move through it. Most of these groups of animals um, hadn't been very well studied before. It, since there was so little already known, we could do almost anything we wanted. And um, so in a way, it was sort of natural history to begin with. Once you're there, you, you, whatever's there, you have the opportunity to, to see what's going on. So uh, yeah, there's all kinds of opportunistic things that, that come along. You don't always find the thing you're looking for, you might find something else. This group of animals called pteropods, which are pelagic snails, uh, had been studied for hundreds of years, but nobody really understood the, how their feeding mechanism, how they, how they collected food. And there had been some theories based on observations of a thing lying in a dish under a microscope. Uh, but when we started doing this diving, mainly a fellow named Ron Gilmer, we found that, that they produce a, a little uh, bubble or balloon of mucus attached to their mouth parts, and that this 
this it collects particulate material from the water, sort of like a, a sticky flypaper or something, and then they pull this thing in and they eat whatever got stuck to it. One thing that it really struck me in diving was um, not just the specifics of what we were studying, but the whole concept of, uh, you know, the struggle for existence and, and being out there in the middle of that wide open ocean and that uh, very um, sparse environment and these little tiny jelly animals just, just floating around somehow making a living, that, that always really, um, really impacted me. The experience of seeing what the ocean is like from inside it is a valuable one for anybody who studies the ocean uh, because most oceanographers experience the ocean from the deck of a ship at best, if not from their desk. And uh, so they don't very often have a um, sort of intuitive feeling of what the ocean is like as a fluid medium for the things that are in it. And although we can't experience everything from the point of view of a phytoplankton or a whale or whatever, nevertheless, I think being in it and having that sense of what it's like is a valuable experience. To learn more about Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, visit us on the web at www.whoi.edu.